What's up, my piano friends? Today, I'm gonna teach you the top four mistakes beginners always make on piano that really hurts their progress, especially for adult learners and people trying to teach themselves off of YouTube. And some of these are so easy to fix in just a few minutes if you know what your problem is and how to solve it. And you're gonna wanna stick around because each mistake gets more and more important up until the final mistake, which is absolutely critical for your success if you ever want to be good at piano. So let's start off with mistake number one, which believe it or not, is learning to read sheet music. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Zach, piano teachers always say that it's super important to learn how to read sheet music, but that's because they're all teaching classical style music. And yes, if you want to learn how to play classical music, you are going to have to read notes. But if your goal is just to learn your favorite songs from the radio, you know, pop, blues, jazz, rock and roll, oldies, these songs are much easier to learn using a simple Google search and a cheat sheet. That's going to allow even a complete beginner to learn songs in a few minutes or less. And this is going to save you absolute boatloads of time and let me prove it to you. By the way, if you've ever been to one of those dueling piano bars where people are just requesting all those random songs and they can just magically play all of them with no sheet music, this is the method they're using. All right, so check this out. Let's go to this random song generator and let's just hit random music. And let's take the first one, Blank Space by Taylor Swift. I actually really, really like this song. So all we gotta do is hop over to Google and type in Blank Space Chords, all right? And we have to click on the first one that pops up. And if we scroll down, boom, we have the chords for the entire song. So as you can see, we have D, then we have BM, which stands for B minor, and then G and then A. And just like almost every pop song out there, it's just gonna repeat the same four chords over and over, right? We have D, B minor, G, A. And if we keep scrolling down, we have D, B minor, G, A. And these four chords just repeat over and over. So now the easy way to find these chords on piano is all we have to do is bring up the ultimate chords cheat sheet. And I'll tell you where to get this cheat sheet in a bit. And we just find our chords. So we just find D, which is right here. Then we find B minor, which is right down here. And then we have to find G, which is right up here. And then we have to find A, which is right here. And boom, we have our four chords to the song. And so if we put these four chords by the piano, all we have to do is copy these shapes. All right, so our first shape is D major, which looks like this. Our next one is B minor, looks like this. And I'm just copying the shapes from the cheat sheet. And then G major, which looks like this. And then finally, A major, which looks like this. And you practice those for a bit and you can already play the song. Nice to meet you where you been. Knock it, show you incredible things. Magic, madness, heaven, sin. Saw you there and I thought, oh my God, look at that face. You look like my next mistake. Love's a game, do you want to play? And already we got the outline to the song. And now it feels a little bit sparse. So to spice it up a bit, let's play each chord eight times times. And this is a simple what's called money pattern, and we'll talk more about money patterns later. So we play each chord eight times. Now we have D major, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, B minor, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, G major, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, A major, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now it's gonna sound a lot cooler, so let's continue on with the second part of the verse. New money, suit and tie, not can read you like a magazine. Ain't it funny, rumors fly, and I know you heard about me, so hey, let's be friends. I'm dying to see how this one ends. Grab your passport and my hand, yeah. And boom, you can already play blank space, no sheet music necessary. How much easier is that than memorizing note by note sheet music, right? And you can do this for any song. If you like the idea of learning songs this way without sheet music, hit that like button. And of course, there are a few other things involved, you know, like adding the left hand, added some more, you know, complicated money patterns so it can sound more like this.
And I know if you're a beginner, that probably looked really hard, but trust me, it's actually pretty simple to learn. It's just a lot of repeated patterns, but that's a little bit outside the scope of this video. If you're really interested in learning that system and you want to learn a ton of songs from the radio, I'll put a link here and in the description for the top three chord progressions for beginners video that goes much more in depth on this process. But first we have to talk about mistake number two, and this is a very important one. And that involves the sloppy choppy playing that you hear from so many beginners. And the cause of this is actually probably not what you think. So let me ask you a question right now. When you learn something on piano, right, and you have a tricky section, is your solution to just repeat it over and over and just bang your head against the wall until it works? And if so, you're making it really hard on yourself, okay? Because we can work smarter, not harder, and use other practice strategies that will solve this 10 times faster. So let's take an example, right? Let's say you're trying to learn the song Apologize by One Republic. It sounds like this. But for most beginners out there, it sounds more something like this. Right, it's very choppy and sloppy, and even though they're playing all the right notes, it doesn't have that smooth, confident feeling to it. And so at this point, most beginners just repeat it over and over for weeks and weeks and weeks until it finally sounds okay. But that's not really how it works. Instead, we want to drill in this pattern using the four rhythms technique, okay? And here's how it works. So let's just take the first four notes of the pattern. All we're gonna do is we're gonna repeat these four notes four times using four different rhythms, okay? So step one, we're gonna play these same four notes, but we're gonna use rhythm number one, which is long, short, long, short. It's gonna sound like this. Long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. And you're gonna repeat that four times. Then you're gonna do rhythm number two, which sounds like this. Short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long. And you're gonna do that four times. And then you move on to rhythm number three, which sounds like this. Long, short, 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 long, short, short, short. You're gonna repeat that four times and then you're gonna move on to the final rhythm, which sounds like this. Short, 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 long, short, 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 long. And you're gonna repeat that four times. And finally, when you go back to playing it like normal, trust me, it's going to magically kind of smooth it out and it'll sound more like this. And beginners always tell me, they're like, Zach, after using the rhythm technique, it makes it feel like it's in my fingers. And I'm absolutely begging you to try this because the before and after just feels so much better in your hands. And this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to practice strategies. By the way, if you want the cheat sheet for these four rhythms, plus the ultimate chords cheat sheet we used earlier, both of those are on the bonuses page. Just click the link, put in your name and email, hit submit, and you can download both of those cheat sheets here. All right, on to mistake number three, and this is an important one, and that's not using the over-under technique. And trust me, if you're not doing this, you're gonna be absolutely kicking yourself for not fixing it sooner because it's so easy to fix. So a lot of beginner players have what I like to call weak pinky syndrome, where their first four fingers sound nice and strong and confident, but their pinky feels weak and feeble. And do you ever feel like this when you play? Now, what most people do is they think they have to, quote unquote, strengthen their pinky by doing these, you know, pinky exercises, right? But it's actually not a strength issue. And in fact, there are no muscles in your pinky. It's only tendons. The muscles are actually in your wrist. So you don't solve weak pinky syndrome by strengthening your pinky. You solve it by fixing your technique. Let me show you. So if you play piano with what's called a straight wrist, meaning you have your hands on the keys and your wrist goes straight back and you keep your wrist in this position, your first four fingers can solve smooth and confident. But the problem is your pinky, if you curve it and have it nice and strong and curved, it's not going to be able to play the note. So what beginners do is they compensate by flattening out their pinky, right? So it's easier to reach the note. And they have this very weak pinky sound. But it's a very easy fix. All you have to do is whenever you're playing toward your pinky on the piano, you take your wrist and you rotate it down and out. Okay, and now look how curved our pinky is when our wrist is over here, and it can play nice and strong. So now instead of weak pinky, 
that barely reaches the keys, we have a a nice strong peaky because we're rotating our wrist down and out. And this technique is called the over under technique or the over under wrist motion. And if you practice this technique for a few days, you can magically have a strong pinky whenever you play. Okay, and it kills me because so many beginners out there spend years trying to quote unquote strengthen their pinky with these, you know, exercises, but it's like, no, Let's work smarter, not harder, and just fix your technique. And this over-under technique is actually just one of many motions, right? Many small shifts in your wrist and your hand that are absolutely essential if you ever want to play smooth and confident on the keys. But what's really dangerous is as a beginner, the longer you don't use correct technique, like the over-under technique and like some other ones, the longer you're gonna drill in bad habits that can be an absolute nightmare to correct in the future. So if you're interested in really taking care of your technique once and for all, and the four exercises that really shore up all of these issues. I have another video called the top four exercises for piano beginners. I'll put the link to that up here and in the description. Which brings me to the final mistake, which is absolutely critical if you ever want to be a good piano player. But before that, if you like this style of teaching where I really cut the fat on what's actually important to get you up and running on piano, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. I'd really hate for you to miss out on a future video that could really change the whole trajectory of your piano learning. All right, on to mistake number four, and this one's important, which is not having a plan of attack on piano. And a ton of beginners out there, they sit down at the piano and they just randomly kind of waffle around. You know, instead of having a laser focused day by day, week by week, month by month plan of attack, a workout plan, right? That's been proven by hundreds of students to work time and time again. So here's an example of a plan of attack for mastering your technique. And as you can see, we have week one all the way down through week 12. And for each week, we have four exercises we're learning and each week we change the key we're learning in which means we're practicing all four of these exercises over different notes on the piano. And once you get done with all 12 weeks, you'll have drilled in correct technique for every single possible combination of notes on piano. And so what you do is you sit down in week one, you practice exercise one, and once you're done practicing it, you put a little tally mark in the box. And then you do the same thing for exercise two. You practice it on day one. You put another tally mark in the box and same for exercise three and exercise four. And then boom, this takes about 10 to 15 minutes and you're done for day one. Then you'd sit back down at your piano for day two. You do exercise one in the key of C, right? And then you'd put your little tally mark and then exercise two and then three and then four. And boom, you're done with day two. And you would keep doing this until you have five tally marks in the box. And once you have five tally marks in the box, you can actually cross that box off the list and you're done with it. And you do the same thing with exercises two, three, and four for week one. And then you continue the same thing for week two, where the key and the notes get gradually harder and harder. And you'd continue all the way up to week 12. And once you have all these boxes crossed off, boom, you're done. And you'll have rock solid technique and confidence on the keys. And you'll just be burning up the ivories. And can you see how this is much better to have a plan, to have a system that's been proven over and over again, to just take care of your technique once and for all. Instead of, you know, waffling around YouTube and saying, you know, today I'll just take this random scale and this finger exercise from this random video. And you kind of feel like you're spinning your wheels instead of just working smarter, not harder and having a plan. And so this is the plan for the technique portion of your learning. And so if you're interested in learning that, click this video for the top four exercises for piano beginners. Or if you're more just interested in learning your favorite songs from the radio in two minutes or less, click this video that'll teach you the step-by-step system to learn that. Happy practicing and I'll see you in the next one.